Hey people, let's talk about the settings for Civ 3. So first things first, one thing you might want to do is you go into your conquest folder, which you can find at this file path if you have the game installed through Steam. What you do is you go to your configuration settings. So that's conquests.ini. Uh, I might not show the INI, but this is the one. So there's three things you want to do here. The first thing is you set keep resolution. It might be zero, you set it to one. That will make it so the game keeps your current resolution when you boot up Civ 3. If this line isn't there, you want to add it to this file wherever, but maybe between these two, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> uh, two other things you might want to do here is you go to max autosaves and you set it to 100. So that means it will keep 100 autosaves instead of five. So no more, oh no, that autosave was too far back. I can't get, ba get back there. You're gonna have all the, the autosaves. And the final thing is play intro. You're going to want to set that to zero. That way you don't have to see the intro every time you boot up the game. Okay, and now we're going to go into the game options. So you go to preferences, and you're going to have all these options. So first one is autosave. You're going to want that on. Why would you not want the option um, the option of the game autosaving for you, just in case you need it? Capital governor is default for new cities. Yeah, I guess if you use a governor. I wouldn't recommend using a governor, though. Always wait out of turn. This is a, a big one. Often new players will send me their save files and they have this turned off, and this is bad. Because what that means is often the turn will end when you don't want it to end, when you're not done like checking your empire. Maybe you want to like adjust your science spending or like check if your cities are about to disorder, things like that. It's good to have this left on uh, so that you always wait and it doesn't automatically end the turn. This is whatever. Tutorial mode. Sometimes I forget that there even is a tutorial in this game. Wonder Initiation pop-up. I'd recommend turning this off. Uh, it does give you additional information, uh, but all of this information is stuff you can get from just clicking F7. It will tell you who's building what and who has what. Uh, so the information you get from these pop-ups is it just makes the turn slower. Uh, show dis Civil Disorder pop-ups. I'd actually recommend turning these off, and the reason for this is it's just really, really time-consuming. It just cycles through all your cities. I mean, it's already going to cycle through your cities to show you like the, the disorder, but this does an additional pop-up, which means you have to click through it instead of being able to just let it play out. Uh, it, while it's, it does give you the option to zoom in, and when you're zoomed into the city, you can like fix it and add more entertainers, or maybe go into the Despotism Advisor and turn up your happiness slider. Uh, but that's uh, that's something you can do anyway. Like if if you have the option turned off, you can just like double click on the city or click on the advisor real quick and then fix the happiness before the city's disorder at the start of the turn. Uh, next one is show food and shields on the map. And I'm very, very opinionated about, about this. It should be turned off. So there's two reasons for this. This first one is what it does is a, not this. Huh, did that not work? So look at how bonus grasslands look here. So notice how it's like a big noticeable white circle in the center of a grassland tile. If you turn this option on, suddenly things get super murky, like there's things everywhere. The big one is in the middle of the desert tile, but the bonus grass line is a lot less noticeable, and it's not in a consistent location. Sometimes it's on one side of the tile, sometimes it's on another. Uh, the other reason to keep this off, aside from it being harder to see where the bonus grass lines are, is that this will actually lie to you. If we can, This is an archipelago map, so it's not likely that there's any floodplains, but what it does, it says that uh, a floodplain gives two food, when in reality, a floodplain gives three food. So, of course, it seems like two food in despotism, but when you exit despotism, you no longer have the despotism penalty, and then a floodplain, even without irrigation or anything, will give you three food. So it does lie to you. And the final reason is that you should have all, like, this doesn't even give you that much information. Like, it does tundra, desert, plains, uh, and grassland. That's four terrain types. You can measure, uh, you can memorize that. You should already have this memorized. Desert's one shield. Plains is one shield and one uh, and one food. Grassland is two food or two food and a shield if it's a bonus grassland. And then Tundra is one food. There you go. If you can memorize that, you're, it's telling you all the information that having the food and shield yields turned on will tell you. So next thing is this City, city Pop drop shadow. I, I've looked apparently... It'll put like a little shadow next to the 14 or the, the population number. It's not very noticeable. This one doesn't matter too much. Ask for build orders after unit construction. I think this is actually useless uh, because whenever you build a unit, you'll already get like a notification because it'll, the unit will pop up and you'll have to do something with the unit. And so once you get that notification, like once you see the unit is built and it asks you to get, give orders for the unit, then you know to change production if you want to change production. 
So the extra pop-up is actually superfluous because it doesn't actually help you change production because you, yeah. <laughs> Colorblind help, uh, this uh, doesn't change the colors at all. What it does is it puts the little Rome Roman just in case you have difficulty telling colors apart and you want to know who like a unit or a, a city belongs to. I guess just the cities. Disable population limit warnings. Normally I keep these off. Uh, if you don't know the mechanics behind population, like uh, how an aqueduct works, things like that, maybe you, you want to keep it on. Uh, but generally, like once you learn that, there's no reason, sorry, there's very few reasons to have it on. But there is one very specific reason, and that's the settler or worker disband. So when a city cannot grow or is starving for whatever reason, often if you have this option turned on, there will be a pop-up that says, hey, it's not growing fast enough to build the settler. Uh, would you like to change production? Would you like to keep building the settler? Or would you like to abandon the city? And normally you'd think, why would you abandon the city there? Like, why can't you? Do, you can just abandon here. Why would you want to do that through the pop-up? But if you do do it through the pop-up, you actually get the worker or the settler. So if you're going to disband the city anyway, and you have the shields in the box, you might as well take the two or one population out of it and do a worker or settler disband. That's what it's called. So yeah, uh, to do a worker or settler disband, you need to have this option on. So that's the one, or this option off, actually. Uh, you have to have the pop-ups on. So that's the one reason I'd recommend it. Always renegotiate deals. Yes, it's just a good thing to have for diplomacy. Show advanced unit action button. If anyone asks, like, oh, how do you get the workers to show the extra buttons up here? This is how. I've got that question a, a few times. Show fewer multiplayer pop-ups. is useless if you're playing single. It doesn't matter if you're playing single player, but... You'd be surprised, you'd be shocked how many like people have sent me their saves for multiplayer games and they have this option turned off. So like a lot of people ask me, oh, Suede, how do you react so fast in multiplayer games? You have the reflexes of a aggressive tiger or something like that. It, a little things like this. Uh, part of that is having the reduced pop-ups. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, yeah, these ones, the build order ones, like when you build a building or a unit won't show up, but the civil disorder pop-ups and the population pop-ups will along with a few others like uh when you're loading into a multiplayer game there's like a okay you're we're loading in that kind of thing pop up there's a few other like that uh and so you want to have these this option turned on just so the the pop-ups don't interrupt your play because although this is a turn-based game when you play it multiplayer it's has an uh it has elements of a, a real-time strategy game because you have to like compete with the other player to move your unit first do not auto select units in multiplayer. This is a very good option to have. I wouldn't normally uh, recommend having it on, uh, but there's some very specific circumstances where it's worth its weight in gold. So what auto select unit does is like, let's say I uh, fortify this worker. Notice how it goes to the next worker, uh, next worker, next worker, etc., and then it takes me across the map to this nuclear weapon because we're playing future here. So if you're trying to like move a precise a unit or a precise group of units then sometimes when the map pans to the other side to show you a unit on the other side of the map that can really screw you over so if you're if that's happening to you or you need to do like a very precise landing or something like that what you do is you turn this option on but then you're going to want to turn it off otherwise because it really helps like cycling through your units like this it helps you do your movements fast uh next on the list most of these uh, i'd recommend playing with the animations and the show movements off uh, although sometimes it can be useful i think in multiplayer games like if you have show on but not animate that might actually technically be optimal because let's say someone does this if you have a unit here then you wouldn't see it if it's instantaneous but if you have show moves on you'd see like the little guy passing by uh, so that might be helpful uh, but you want you don't want to have the animations on because if the animations are on what it'll do is this guy will take like a few seconds to run all the way over here and so let's say you were trying to defend neapolis well then uh you wouldn't see the unit attacking you in, until like three seconds after i would if i have this option turned off so uh oh god do not for whatever reason turn this off awful awful like you have units in here but the game isn't showing <laughs> If you see something very confusing happening, it's probably because you turned that off by mistake. Uh, yeah, all the stuff. Uh, so one more. I'd recommend doing always build previously built units uh, just because it's the best bet you're going to have as to what you're going to want to produce next. 
Uh, so it's it's handy and it saves you time. And cancel units. Yeah, so this is the, the clincher one. Normally you'd think that would make sense. If an enemy comes by, you don't want your worker to like keep on building a, a mine or something like that. Uh, but it actually cancels the auto bombard command. So often what you might do is, let's say you put 10 artillery outside Iznik, right? Uh, and then you set them to auto bombard. So every turn they will bombard Iznik and create a point of pressure for the Ottomans. Uh, but the auto bombard won't actually work if you have this option turned on. Because what it's going to do is it'll you assign them to auto bombard, right? And then next turn the game says, oh, we're right next to some enemy units. The one de one's defending Iznik. We better cancel the auto bombard. So uh, if you're doing auto bombard, you want that off. Otherwise, you could have it on, I, I guess. All right. So just some last things. These one come up in these ones come up in multiplayer games a lot. So we'll just get them out of the way. So uh, this is actually the most uh, asked question for my channel. How do you do this? Control Shift M. Control Shift M. Control Shift M. Control Shift M. If you go up to here. You can actually change the preferences, like you can clear different things off the map. This lets you see what's under the cities. Uh, Z zooms you out. This is useful when you're doing, uh, like when you have like a lot of bom bombers, it prevents the game from like uh, moving your camera away. So you can just do B click, B click, B click, and you don't have to be constantly repositioning your mouse. Uh, so yeah, if you see this during a game, you hit Z. Backspace. Backspace is what moves this over here. Often people will ask in multiplayer games, they'll be like, oh shit, the thing's on the side of the screen, how do I fix that? It, it's backspace. And then delete will uh, remove the heads up display altogether. So delete, backspace, Z, control, shift, M are the ones that changes what's actually going on on the map. So last point here, often I get the question like, oh, what version of Civ are you using? I'm just using the Civ 3 Conquests, uh, or sorry, Civ 3 Complete that comes packaged with, with Steam. I don't have any crazy add-ons or anything like that. I have exactly two add-ons, and then I've done all the, the preferences and the the edits to the conquest.ini that I've mentioned at the start of the video. So the two add-ons I have are the grid. So this is something that multiplayers use to tell each other our location. So let's say I'm on the team of the Arabs. At the start of the game, the Arab says they're at E2, and I say I'm at D8. So that's more helpful than saying I'm in the southwest, I'm in the southeast, because the southwest could be here, it could be here, it could be here. Uh, so in multiplayer games, that's handy. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. The other mod I use is Popheads, I think it's called. It's these guys, and this is the most insanely, insanely useful thing in the world. So uh, this is how in multiplayer games I prevent my cities from disordering. I do like a quick check using the domestic advisor, and it's pretty visible. Like if I just change this down, I can tell that Rome, like the the unhappies outnumber the happies, and maybe invade too. Yeah, uh, it just makes it a lot more visually clear because sometimes like and maybe not for this culture group, but for different culture groups and in different eras, sometimes like the content citizens, like, they look really angry or the, the unhappy citizens might look content. Uh, so that's why I use this mod to make it a lot easier to prevent disorders. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.